Hey guys, welcome back. Oh, these woods are just so peaceful. So, so peaceful. There's so many rooms back here. I wish I could just venture through that. But I don't know, it's not a good idea. <laughs> I don't know what or who's back there. Anyway. I wanted to talk about music today. Music and kids. Weird topic, huh? Well, not exactly. I wanted to talk about this topic because, you know, I'm a parent. I have five kids. I have five kids, and I've had people tell me that I am. sheltering my kids by not allowing them to hear certain types of music. Now, specifically, there is no certain type of music that I don't allow them to hear. You know, there's only music that I play in my household and whatever they do hear is what they hear. Now, I'm not blocking my kids from secular music the way my mom did. I'm not doing that. Y'all know how I feel about Christianity and sheltering your kids regarding that. Because I was severely sheltered. And I wasn't allowed to do certain things. That's not where I'm going. I don't expose my kids to all the mainstream music out here. Because it's not so much that I think they're going to be influenced by it. It's just music is a piece of shit these days. I mean, have you heard today's music? I mean, come on, y'all know, y'all know I'm not tripping with that. Music is shit. I don't want my kids hearing that. Um, not only is it just bad all around, like most mainstream music, y'all already know, the lyrics are shit. The lyrics are pure shit. It's nothing but sexual stuff and gang violence and any kind of violence, or if not that, you know, it's still sexual, it's twerking, it's all kind of sexual innuendos and... My kids don't need to hear that. They're young and they don't need to hear that. Now, like I said, now if somebody else is playing it in their home, in their household that we go visit or in their car or something, I can't help what other people vi I mean, uh, visit. I can't help what other people play and expose my kids to. I can't help that if we're in somebody's car that they won't be blasting like Nicki Minaj or something. You know, the uncut version of somebody's songs. I can't really help that. But. I'm not going to act all, cr all crazy and sanctimonious and try to cover their ears or cuss the person out like, don't play that around my kids. See, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm just neutral with it. If they come across it, then they come across it. If they don't understand certain lyrics and they ask me what the lyrics mean, then I'm going to tell them what the lyrics mean. There's a difference with that. There's a difference, there's a difference between purposely exposing your children to something versus not allowing them to. Now, the reason why I'm, t I'm saying this is because, again, I've had people tell me that I'm sheltering my children. What the? I'm sheltering my children from the world because they don't know all the mainstream music. Hell, I don't know all the mainstream music, and I don't give a damn. I don't care to know all the mainstream music, you know? I just don't care, and it's not important. I homeschool for a reason, you know? Influences are still influences, regardless of what you say. Now, my childhood. My childhood went like this. My father was an extreme... What the hell is a bird over there? Oh. My father was an extreme music head, I guess. He was severely into music. Like, not as far as playing it, but he was... Um, not as far as like playing instruments or creating songs, but he was very much into music as far as... He always had music playing. It was always secular music. And he's Jamaican, so I grew up I grew up with a lot of reggae. I grew up with he played anything. I just I heard a lot of rap. I heard a lot of hip hop. I heard a lot of um R and B especially. Um, even some pop songs. I heard a lot of stuff. I heard a lot of stuff as a kid. The majority of it was of course black music, you know? The nineties music for the most part, because I'm a nineties kid. And I grew up hearing all of that. I grew up 
um, hearing all of that, like before we came to Georgia especially, we were back living back in Brooklyn, New York, I was exposed to all that music, you know, all the good old stuff, like, um, you know, Key Sweat, R. Kelly, uh, whoever else you can think of, all the good old guys, um, yeah, I grew up, I grew up knowing so much music, and especially reggae, like I said, I knew a lot of reggae, like, um, Shaggy, Yellow Man, uh, Damn, I can't remember any at the moment, but y'all know what I mean. If you if you know reggae, if you know 90s reggae, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I grew up with all that. My dad played it a lot, all the time. And I was young. I was like young, young. And that I think that kind of formed my love for music. Like I grew up loving music and I'm very musically inclined as it is. I heard so much music, um, it had a huge influence over me. Now, on the other on the flip side. My mother, she was not as much of a music head. And even if she was, once she picked up Christianity, all of it went out the window. <laughs> See what I'm getting at? Once she picked up Christianity, which was, um, I'd say probably when I was like five or six, maybe, when she started getting heavily into it, um, I don't think she was into music as much anymore. Like the mainstream music. Because, you know, Christianity tells you you should not be listening to anything that's not gospel. You shouldn't be listening to anything that's not considered Christian music. You're a heathen if you listen to, you know, fucking MC Hammer or Snoop Dogg or whoever. So, um, that eventually took a hold of her. It was irritating, y'all, because when I got older, like after we moved to Georgia and I was like age 10 and over, um, past age 12, my mom stopped letting, stopped allowing me to hear that stuff. And I don't think she ever wanted me to hear it in the first place. Like when I was young, my dad was blasting it. She wasn't ever too keen on it in the first place. Probably because she knew the lyrics were bad. But, you know, y'all know how it is. 90s music was still good music. Even though the lyrics are bad. But I was really young experiencing this. So, my mom did not allow me. To listen to that stuff on her own I mean on my own I had to sneak and listen to it as I got into middle and high school especially high school I had to sneak and listen to everything I had to sneak and listen to the radio unless I was in the car with my dad and he played it willingly and those two would fight over it like don't play that music I want to hear it don't play it around our kids my mom would get an attitude she would always get an attitude as far as the music they fought over that a lot they had a big clash as far as music and it was ridiculous my mom she used to like I remember before she got that way, she used to love some Luther Vandross, I think. She used to love Luther Vandross, and I think after she went Christian ro Christian mode, she stopped. Like, she stopped playing it, she stopped, um, she just stopped playing it. She stopped getting into regular music. She just switched completely to gospel, and that was all we were allowed to hear. Now, I'm not saying gospel music is bad. It's not. However, it is safer for your kids to hear gospel music or just music without lyrics at all than to hear all the sexual stuff that I grew up hearing. The reason why I say that is because y'all know my stories. I was a very sexual child even before I got molested. Even before I was ever abused, at least as far as I know, if anybody had molested me before that, I have no remembrance of it. I was already a very sexual child. And I have to say, y'all, the music didn't help. The music did not fucking help. And I know that now because I'm older. And I've monitored certain things. And I've studied myself. And I know myself. And the music didn't help. It just didn't. Being exposed to those sexual songs. As a child. Was bad for me. Very bad. <laughs> um, I was already having sexual dreams as a child. Probably sparked by all the stuff I was hearing. And y'all know, if you know reggae music, reggae music is extremely sexual. You know, whatever you listen to is going to come out in your mind. Especially if you're a kid. Um, all this stuff is going to get soaked into your brain. Even if you don't know what it means. Your subconscious knows. You know, music has power over you. The beats and the instruments and however, whatever the frequencies are to said song. They have power over you. Music is more powerful, y'all, than you give it credit for. Music is power. Why do you think they use music against us? Music is power. If you use it wrong, that power is going to be, you're going to have the wrong power inside of you. You're going to be 
sexually crazy. That's why everybody around here, everybody, well, people, period, are sex crazy. Because what do we grow up here? What do we grow up hearing? All the sexual music. The baby boom generation had nothing but sexual music. I mean, come on. We already know what R. Kelly was up to all that time. But look at his music. You know, <clears throat> all those guys. Again, it was good music, but as the music got more sexual and you hearing that as a child all the time I'm sure it had a part to play in everything me being over sexual as I am today that's with being abused but even so I'm sure the music didn't help you know I'm sure it didn't fucking help so in conclusion I say all that to come back around and say I don't care what anybody says you do have to watch what your children hear you really do because who wants their eight-year-old to be walking around singing something sexual like come on now some of those ignorant black folks apparently don't give a damn they let their kids hear whatever like oh it's just a song it don't matter i don't care about that she's just young she ain't be doing nothing yeah sure keep saying that shit you are over sexualizing your child when you allow them to hear all kind of ratchet twerking booty shaking music like no I don't care what people say about I'm sheltering my kids the way my mom did. No, I am not sheltering them. Again, if we're in the vicinity of some music that I don't approve of and they hear it, so what? That's just, it, it is what it is. If they hear it, and like I said, if they don't understand it and they ask me about it, I'll tell them and I'll tell them if the song is right or wrong for them to hear, why it's right or wrong for them to hear, why they shouldn't be hearing it yet, all that. I'll explain because I'm just open like that with my kids. But I'm not going to purposely expose them to Nicki Minaj and Lil' Kim and all that just because, oh, they need to know what music is out here so they won't be sitting there lost. Bitch, please. That ain't going to happen. I am not doing that. There is no point to doing that. I don't care if they don't know the latest stuff. I don't know the latest stuff. Who cares? My kids are going to be oddballs as it is. Um, That's just how it is. I don't care. We homeschool. We homeschool for a reason. If we're homeschooling, we're trying to keep our kids away from mainstream stuff for a reason. You know? I don't want my kids to end up like me, over-sexual and sex-crazy. Now, yeah, they're not being molested, but still, music influences you. If you don't believe me and you're my age and, old, and older, then something wrong with you. You haven't really studied music. You haven't really studied anything. <laughs> like you should know. Music affects you. What you listen to affects you. The lyrics you're hearing do affect you in some way. Especially when you're young. It affects young people because young people are more vulnerable. Young people are way more susceptible to the energies that, that the music gives off. Young people are more susceptible to all of that. Like period. Point blank. That's just what it is. Y'all wonder why these little five-year-olds out here knowing about sex. Little seven-year-olds talking about dick and pussy. Ten-year-olds talking about wanting to fuck. You know, come on now, 12 year olds getting pregnant. What the hell, y'all? Stop playing garbage music around your kids. If you want to hear the garbage music, then you play it, but don't allow your kids, don't just purposely sit there and say, oh, well, they be, they be aight. While they're hearing it day in and day out for months, and you wonder why they're at school trying to sniff some boy down or something. Come on. This is just ridiculous. So, please people, pay attention to what your kids are hearing. Don't just fluff it off. Kids soak up everything like a sponge, and you all know that. Kids soak up everything. Don't just play anything around your kids and think they're not going to catch on. At one time, it's probably okay, depending on what it is, and like I say, if you can't help it, if they hear it in a store or they hear it at somebody else's house, it's probably fine. Don't act crazy being all judgmental, <clears throat> trying to cover their ears and shit like a Bible thumper. Do not do that. That's bullshit. That's the kind of crap my mom did. Whenever she heard um, any type of sexual or sexual or secular based song, she would just act all crazy, roll her eyes, and try to cover her ears, and try to drag me and my sister out from wherever we were, just to get away from the music, as if the music was really hurting her, like the music was stabbing her in the back, like with literal knives. That's literally how it was. And yeah, I hated that. I mean, that part was just ridiculous. She never really explained why the so-called music was bad. 
She never really explained why we could only listen to gospel music. She never really explained that. It was just, that's what we're going to listen to, period, point blank, regardless of how old you are. You're not going to hear any other stuff. And I think that was crazy because after a certain age, you have to let your kids experience certain things. You know, if your child is 15 or 16 and they end up liking some mainstream song that you don't like, <coughs> well, all you can do is teach them why you don't like the song. That's all you can do. Don't bar them from listening to it because that's just going to make them want to hear it more. They're going to be like, oh, my mom don't like this song, so I'm going to purposely hear it. Y'all know kids are going to do that shit. Don't do that. Just explain. <clears throat> logically explain why you think the song is bad, why you think the song is toxic, you know, what what you don't like about the lyrics, all of that. Just explain. Talk to your kids. Don't, don't, um, don't fluff them off and say, oh, that's a devil song. You're going to hell if you listen to that song. Uh-uh. That's the kind of shit I grew up with regarding my mother, and my father was just the complete opposite. He didn't care. He didn't care what it was. He just let us listen to everything. He was way too open. I guess he didn't know what he was doing. Who knows? I was super young hearing that stuff. And yeah, I know for a fact it made me overly sexual. I know that. I've watched my actions and I've studied my actions up till now. And I just know. Music has power. Music puts things on you that you're probably not aware of. So just be aware of that. And like I said, with your kids, don't purposely expose your kids to sexual music. Please don't. Parents do it every day and it pisses me off. When I see it, it just grinds my gears. Like, you got your child dancing to this particular song, this twerking song, and you teaching them how to twerk. Come on. I've seen people do that. Y'all forget, my mom had a school. I've watched a lot of kids. I've practically raised a lot of kids. I've seen some stuff. Anyway. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope it makes you guys think about some things. I hope it enlightens you. I hope you take it as some wisdom and um, yeah. Write your comments and opinions down below. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe and all that other jazz. And yeah, I hope you guys are having a great day, month, second, hour, week, and month. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Peace out.